Alors, je vais donner la parole à madame Juliette euh, Toakli, qui nous vient du Ghana. Elle est directrice euh, et fondatrice de Family Child Associates et président du comité de, de gouvernance de United Way Worldwide. Euh, madame Toakli, vous avez la parole. Hello, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, for inviting me to say a few words. Um, so much has been said already that I would have certainly been happy to, to discuss. Um, um, and I think I will speak more from the perspective of my working in civic society with United Way Worldwide, which is the world's largest private NGO, as was described this morning. Uh, with annual revenues of $5 billion. And uh, the reason why I would like to focus on that is because United Way's model is to create community impact using business models and community partnerships. I think that uh, I've been hearing the word partnerships, partnerships, partnerships over and over again, new types of partners, new types of alliances, which are all critical. Um, certainly, as, as a physician, the uh, fellow that spoke about his program in OCP was music to my ears, um, because certainly I consider uh, food security a public health issue as a physician, and I don't think it's often addressed that way, but uh, within civic societies such as United Way, we can introduce that concept of food security being a public health concept and uh, work with communities. And uh, certainly, I look forward to having some conversation later with our colleague uh, to see what kind of uh, relationships we can develop with them. But having worked for many years on the continent, I'm actually from Nigeria. I work in Ghana. Um, having worked on the continent uh, south, west, um, particularly, and east, there's been an erosion of trust, I find, in our populace especially our young populace. There's been a hounding of civic society, the space within which civic societies uh, can do what they need to do. And it's at a time when we need them more than ever. Um, I, I don't want to rehash the comments that were made by the fellow on my left here about the terrorism situation, but there's an, an absolute relationship between what's going on in the Sahel and with Boko Haram and the fact that the military governments of our day destroyed our educational systems, which once were amongst the best in the world. And I speak from personal experience. Um, and so we have to support civic society groups to reintroduce health, education, it, we can quibble about whether it's education then health or health then education, it really makes no difference. The end, at the end of the day, our children are sick, our adults are sick, that's why they die in their 50s, 50s, I mean, <laughs> you know, that's when most people are most productive and we are losing our professionals and nobody says anything. Uh, but I think we need to revisit how important civic society is within our countries and really start developing mechanisms that indicate trust between the governments of our day and the civic organizations instead of having this high degree of distrust and, and high level of hostility uh, which permeates into the younger folks. Our, our youth don't trust us at all. They have no reason to. What have we done for them, really? What have our governments done for them? They don't even recognize them half the time. And I do like the point you made about it's not migration, it's an exodus. It's disgraceful what's going on, absolutely disgraceful. And we sit there talking about it as though it's an excellent coffee table dinner uh, chat. No, seriously, it's, it's, we've got to start getting serious at all levels. But I do think that the, the, the most uh, cost efficient way would be to expand the role of civic society groups and allow them to operate. I, I, I'm not putting a plug in for United Way Worldwide. Uh, but in the five years that I've worked with them, I have been thoroughly impressed with the way that they do not reinvent wheels. They take examples from southern communities, such as in India, Korea, 
Asia, Latin America to apply within the African continent, and they work because we all face very similar issues at all the different levels, rather than looking to Europe and America all the time to, to bring models that are not fit for purpose half the time. Uh, in theory, yes, but in practice, no, because there are so many other issues that we have to deal with, um, not the least of which, of course, is, is low literacy. So yes, education must be fit for purpose, but to, to achieve that, we do need to take some more circuitous routes. I think that we also need to look at agriculture. I, I mentioned that earlier. I think that we need to rebuild trust in our young people for our structures at each level of society. And again, I think this is where civil society is particularly important. Um, I think that the diaspora may play a very critical role here. I was a diasporan myself. I knew about United Way when I was at Harvard. I was at Harvard for nearly 30 years. And I heard a lot about United Way. Never thought once that I'd ever be directly involved with it. But recognized once I returned home that the models that were being used were very, very effective. And we could adapt them accordingly. And so I think the diaspora need to be encouraged not just to come back and do, but to come back and give back in ways that they're comfortable uh, with. And, and again, supporting some of the initiatives of organizations such as United Way. It's not the only organization, certainly, but uh, that's the one I know best. I do think that we need to take the climate uh, change situation very seriously. Um, I'm also a Rotarian, and I'll never forget the day about five years ago when I met a group of Rotarians from France, I believe, who had taken it upon themselves 10 years ago to fly around the coast of Africa, and who decided 10 years later to fly again around the coast of Africa and draw what they saw. It was shocking. We're losing our countries, we're losing our coasts, we're losing our coastlines. And again, nothing gets said about it. We watch poor people building their cities on ground that we know is going to be submerged in a few years, and nothing is said at any level. Um, I think that we've got to really start taking green economies seriously. Uh, and um, again, I, I think I'm going to sound like a broken record. I think this might be another space, of course, for civic society to, uh, to play a role. As a private practitioner, when I hear people talk about public-private uh, uh, initiatives as being the way to go, I agree in theory. But our governments, I don't think, always understand how important they are and uh, are fearful of, of engaging often with private, uh, successful private groups because I think of a sense of being found out, perhaps not doing things properly or correctly. I don't know what it is, but there's always a little bit of pushback and it never, in my mind, seems to be as effective as it could or should be, mostly from the government side, not from the private sector side. And I do think that for all of us here who are in this room who are involved in governments of ver in various ways, please look at this again more seriously because I do think that as a private practitioner and as most private practitioners are, we, we focus on cost effectiveness. We have to watch the bottom line and make sure we're getting enough out for what we're putting in, in a timely way, which is not always the way governments run. Um, and so I do think when you have a genuine relationship and a genuine partnership, it can be extremely valuable. And I think we are acutely aware, I think, of how critical we are in terms of our health and education areas. And I think this is where particularly we need to start really looking at funding from some of the larger banks in these areas. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Merci bien, madame. Toi, Cli, et je vous remercie au nom de tous pour votre exposé.